Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of our slash entitled parents. In today's episode, free seat entitled couple gets karma served for 14 hour flight. Karen tried to scam the store and after she got caught, called me a slur word and got banned. Your sister died? Too bad I'll just empty the house. Parents will not let me move out and religious trauma. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Free seat entitled couple gets karma served for 14 hour flight. This happened whilst I was married. I still tell the story now and get a lot of smirks and ha ha yes karma at her best comments. So my husband, now ex, and I were one of the last to board the plane as he had misplaced his boarding ticket and we had to search for it. When we got on, we were walking up the plane and could see our row. The plane was pretty much full and all settled in. A couple older than us sat in our row of three. I checked our tickets and then asked the couple what seats they were supposed to be in as those were ours. They refused to move, they had scored three seats to their two bottoms, whereas the row in front had a very slim girl at the window. The air hostess came over, and as they were older and playing the age card, the hostess asked us to sit the seats in front. My husband argued that in the event of an accident, our names were not on the right locations, however the hostess said she would swap these over. So we sat down next to the slim girl who took up no room whatsoever. The couple behind were very loudly gloating at their win and discussing how they would have a very pleasant 14-hour trip home. My husband told me as soon as we can, to recline the seats as he was pissed they're gloating. So here we are settled when this man starts walking up the plane, he was a very very large man, long long dreadlocks shoving a baguette in his mouth as he made his way up the aisles. My husband just looked at me and smiled as he realized the only spare seat was that window seat, that would have been next to mine. And yes karma took a dump on the gloating couple's lap as the man asked them to move so he could get into his seat. Once settled he took up a lot of the space and once in the air, the lady called a hostess down and started having a strop about how we had stolen their seats and that we had refused to move when they boarded. Sadly for the lady, our argument at the start of the flight had been witnessed by the staff as everyone else was settled by then so she was shut down by the staff who refused to move us. They had a miserable flight as the guy kept getting up for the toilet, extra drinks and extra snacks. Whoever he was he was a complete gem of human being. Karen tried to scam the store and after she got caught, called me a slur word and got banned. Fair warning, I'm a nerd, so I will be using video game names for others to disclose names. Context, I'm a male, 19, with mild autism who had my first run-in with a Karen at work. If my story's a little sloppy, I apologize for any mistakes. Cast Mangle, me K, you know what I'm talking about. A.S., awesome son. Glottos, awesome manager. Lucky, BFF. Now on with the show. It was a typical afternoon at work where it rhymes with wave day, crowded as all hell, and so on. I was working up front with bagging stuff for customers. One thing about me was I always like making the paying people laugh, cracking corny jokes, prop comedy, etc. One this day however, I was with Glottos, awesome manager, bagging stuff, and then SHE appeared. She was the typical Karen look, blonde dyed hair, fake nails, you know. She also had a son, around 15 I think, normal lad. She walks up to the register and Glottos greeted her and asked how day's been and so on. Kay had one of those snooty spoiled teen voice and tone like from the movies. While her son is fake smiling and trying not to die of embarrassment. She had a huge load of items, and I mean huge. Almost three carts worth. I'm bagging and it gets overwhelming, and the son offers to help, I thought at least the son is more friendly than her, but Kay yanks him back. After that the following conversation ensues. A.S., a mom. K, don't help. Let them do it themselves. She sounded demanding and serious. Glottos, what the heck? Me, rising anger, level 1. 
GLaDOS, he was trying to help. K, no he needs to learn not to be lazy. She says this pointing to me. Me, rising anger level 2. Then Lucky, my BFF, enters and heard what's happening. Lucky walks by and sees my anger rising and pats me on the back to basically say I'm right here in case anything happens. Two hours later. Well feels like it. All of Kay's stuff was in the carts and the price was way more than my normal paycheck. And now Kay gives GLaDOS her huge stack of coupons. GLaDOS. Scans them, but they were all coming back invalid and GLaDOS tells her this, and Kay goes off. Yelling and screeching about horrible customer service, and the usual Karen stuff, and AS steps in and told her he knew this wouldn't work. Kay screamed at him to keep his damn mouth shut. At that moment, both me and GLaDOS's minds clicked and realized something was really fishy. GLaDOS checked the coupons and saw they were expired, but somehow the date was wrong, at least that's what I understood, like they were all a year off. GLaDOS explained that the coupons were forged. Kay retorted by even more yelling and screeching about us being liars, and then she points at me and yells this, as loud as day, and I quote and that, insert slur against disabled people. Is the store's major problem. The whole store went dead quiet, my anger was skyrocketing, GLaDOS, Lucky, and a lot of other people were shocked that this waste of air called me that. AS was dead by embarrassment. Then GLaDOS told Kay to leave. Kay, I want to see the manager. GLaDOS, I am the manager and I'm asking you to leave or I'm calling the cops. K, you and that, another slur towards disabled people, will be sued. Me, anger over 9000. Lucky, please tell everyone what you are suing Mangle and GLaDOS for? Lucky said this in a smugly tone. Me, waiting to pull the anger trigger. K, looks around at everyone staring at her, um. Lucky. Cause I believe we have everything on camera with audio and hundreds of witnesses that would say otherwise. So it would your best interest to scram and never come back, or we can show the cops the evidence of fraud and forgery you tried to scam us with and could be in jail for a long time. So what's it gonna be? K went ghost white and books it out of the store without AS, as apologized profusely for his mom's behavior, and we all heard tires screeching as K squeals out of the parking lot, so we had to call the AS dad to pick him up, GLaDOS told me to go clock out for the day to heal up from that experience and got the next day off as well. Last I know off, Kay was put on the watch list and was forever banned from the store. So the end I guess. Your sister died? Too bad I'll just empty the house. This happened 15 years ago. My sister died on the 27th of December 2007. The very next day I got a call from a neighbor telling me people were emptying the house. So I rushed down to see my aunt, uncle, and their four kids emptying the house. They never called my mother or me they just called my drunk of a brother, and he let them in. When I arrived I saw a SUV bursting at the seams with stuff, and my cousin driving off with a smug look on her face. I exploded called my mother to tell her about this. Then stormed into the house finding two of my cousins in the kids' bedroom rummaging through the kids' things, another in my sister's room going through everything and my aunt and uncle in the living room picking through stuff. My drunk of a brother was on the sofa downing a can of beer. I was beyond mad and screamed at them just what the f asterisk ck they think they were doing. Keep in mind I had just came from the hospital not five hours earlier. They smugly said your sis is dead, so we want her things. I snatched the jewelry box out of her vulture hands and tried to throw them out. I was only 26 at the time so they took no notice. About half an hour later my mother shows up and all hell breaks loose. She screams at them demanding they bring back the stuff they stole, but they said no they needed it for their grandkids. With that my mother threw them out. Ripped my brother a new one and locked up the house. Honestly who steals from a dead person not even cold yet? Parents will not let me move out and religious trauma.
Okay, first of all just want to say that this might be quite long simply because I need to vent and maybe get some perspective. I've been raised in a strict religious, Latino household as the only and youngest daughter, that should already tell you something. It's hard to put this all into words because I hardly understand it myself. My parents are great people in the sense that they've done and still do everything for my benefit and for my success, which is why this is so hard, it feels like I am ungrateful. However, the cost of this love and severe overprotection meant I never had much of a childhood or adolescence mostly because of restrictions put on by religion and because they have been, unknowingly, infantilizing me. This means I have never been taken seriously and always steered away from normal children slash teenage experiences for the sake of my innocence. Growing up with older brothers who got to experience the things they wanted and are always taken seriously revolted me because I never understood why I wasn't treated the same. Fast forward to today, I am 20 years old and in my second year of university, I can financially sustain myself if I were to live independently, so I could just walk out if I wanted to. The household I live in has become dreadful to me, I dread walking in the door every day and always pause before I open the door so I can collect myself. Because of my parents' religion, I am unable to have a social life. I cannot go out as please with the people I please at the time I please. I cannot drink, go to a party, go to a bar on Friday night, go out, at all, on Saturdays, dress the way I want to, listen to what I want to, wear jewelry, have a boyfriend, and a lot, lot more. I have to be sit in my room and witness all these things and listen to all my friends' recollections from their previous night out and just accept the fact I am missing out. My parents take their religion very seriously, in fact my father is one of the leaders in our church which means my family is always heavily involved and seen as an example. This comes with an immense pressure. We have a lot of religious routines and doctrines to follow, it has never crossed my mind that what I've been doing my whole life is considered extreme until my therapist pointed it out to me. When this realization hits you, it breaks you, and it keeps you up at night, every night. Because you realize your whole life has been a lie and pointless suffering. I no longer know who I am, I look at old pictures of myself, and I cannot recognize that person. I am going through a lot of internal conflict, guilt and realizations that it takes a very big toll on my emotional well-being and comes with a lot of mood swings. I no longer have an identity. I say that because in these last two years during the pandemic I was forced to combine who I really am and who I have always pretended to be in front of my family. It has always been so natural for me to have this dual life that I never felt the need to confront my parents or show them my real personality mostly to keep myself safe, keep the peace, and to avoid conflict and disappointment. However, because of quarantine and other things I've had to deal with during that time, I felt this bubble I was in my whole life, finally pop, and I finally started to see things for what they are. This triggered a desire in me to want to do whatever the F asterisk CK I felt like, still behind my parents' back, and the result of that was a huge identity crisis. I have now turned into the person I have always been warned about, I am exactly what my parents despise, mostly out of spite and frustration. I have close family friend of the same age as me, who I grew up with at church, her parents are exactly, and if not worse than mine. Long story short, she decided she had enough and she moved out without her parents' permission, this caused a lot of problems. My own father was revolted. I decided to have a sleepover at her new place, that's what I told my parents. Instead me and this friend went out clubbing for the night. She posted a video of us to her social media, as it turned out her father had been stalking her socials ever since she left, and when he saw the video of me and her partying, he did the inexplicable and sent it to my parents. I cannot express enough how much of a traumatic experience this was, my mother spent days violently crying in betrayal and disappointment, she would come into my room in the middle of the night and pray, she still randomly does. I was lectured, and all this shame was dumped onto me for going to a party. The only party I have her ever been to in my 20 years. I have many other examples where my parents have reacted disproportionately to the simplest thing. My mother bawled her eyes out in absolute disgrace and anguish when I told her I went to the cinema instead of going to school when I was 16. 
She has followed me in absolute tears to school when I told her I wanted to walk alone with my friend, who was a boy, because she thought I was going to be kidnapped and sold as sex slave, her words, not mine, this was when I was maybe 14. My parents spent my entire adolescence telling me they strongly disagreed with me going to university at 18, because I would be easily influenced and instead I should spend a few years doing missionary work for the church. This lack of trust in my character and in my ability to make my own decisions always infuriated me. The time for university came, and since they always shat on the idea of going to university too young, and that I would under no circumstances go to a university too far because I am to remain home, I didn't really feel optimistic about it. I turned 18 and decided to go university regardless, however I still had to remain home. Therefore I applied to a university in a different city from mine that was still easily commutable, but far enough for me to have some sort of experience. This means however, I have to commute two hours to and two hours back, multiple days a week for one hour lectures which is very exhausting. I thought in the midst of all this bullshittery, I'd at least be able to join the volleyball team as it's my favorite sport. I was very excited to have this opportunity to socialize and put my energy toward something. Nope, volleyball practice is quite late in the evening meaning I wouldn't even be able to make my last train home. All I want is to move out and make a life for myself, and to experience things, and be able to make my own decisions. I feel like I have been robbed of everything I am and everything I could be for the sake of religion and morality. I am at my wit's end. I wish I could pack my bags and leave like my friend did however my parents have this psychological hold on me that it feels impossible, I know it would break my family apart if I were to just move out, it would send my parents into a spiral of disappointment and shame. It may not seem like it, but it would honestly ruin in me and my family emotionally, and I don't know if I can take it. I don't know what to do.